Can you actually steal files with QR codes? Well, yes. Welcome to Hack5, it's your weekly dose of technology. I'm Darren Kitchen, and on today's payload, I'm looking at a follow-up of a episode that we did a couple weeks ago with Shannon, where we looked at the possibility of exfiltrating documents or doing an involuntary backup of stealing files using optics. The concept with the payload is that we would go ahead and plant a device like a USB rubber ducky or a bash bunny on a machine that would inject some code that would then get us the files off the thing in way of QR codes. Basically, moving images not too dissimilar to this, exactly like this. And the idea was that you would just record it with your smartphone and then you could reconstruct those files back on your hacker box, back at the headquarters later and have exactly those files. We ran into some problems with our proof of concept in that the, it went too fast. So the exfiltration like throughput was not very large. Uh, and then it caused problems with uh, potential blurring of the image and Anyway, there was also a huge problem, which was all of the dependencies. This was mocked up proof of concept in Linux requiring some stuff that you're just not gonna find on your target machines. But today we're revisiting that because as we threw it out there into the universe, one of our awesome viewers by the name of BGTACWA or BG-WA, hey, awesome payload contribution I'm now gonna feature and then we're gonna riff on it because this one is super sweet. Essentially what this does is replace the dependency that would have been QR encode with some HTML and JavaScript and it does it as a single payload, single stage using just hid injection. So it only injects keystrokes. The beauty of this is because it brings its own files, it's uh, not necessarily going to cause alarms, uh, intrusion detection systems and things of that nature. So no firewalls are gonna get involved in this. And that's good because it means no logs on your pen test. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a demo now of what this actually looks like. The uh, BGWA's version is written using the run extension, and that means that uh, you know you can go ahead and specify Windows, Mac, or Linux, and his proof of concept uses Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that here on this Dell XPS 13, running the latest Ubuntu, and what it does there is pulls up that Alt F2 bar, and then this is really gonna be hard to see here, but that's Xterm, which has a tiny, tiny, tiny font on this machine. And you can see what it's done is it's pulled up Vi, or VI, it's not exactly my favorite text editor, but it works in a pinch, and it's literally uh, writing the HTML and the JavaScript for this file. And once it's done with that, it's gonna go ahead and open it up in Firefox, and we're gonna be able to exfiltrate documents with it. And what it's gonna end up looking like is this and the speed varies. Let me see if I can get that to go. The speed varies such that if you record it with your smartphone, you should be able to go ahead and grab all those frames and reconstruct that file. And QR codes are pretty resilient for this kind of stuff. Now, mind you, this Linux box, it's still typing it in. I mean, it's a minified JavaScript uh, that creates QR codes based on whatever you give it. Obviously, we're gonna use something like Base64 encoded, whatever the file is, um, but it's still going. So I think this is super awesome, and I think it has some potential to make it even better, and that's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. Oop, and it finished, and then it opens up Firefox, and then from here you, you have to click browse and choose a file. So there's still a lot of room for improvement, but I think that we're well underway to having a functional exfiltration payload with free space optics. I don't know, recording screens with smartphones so that IDS sensors don't go off. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this better. I'm gonna switch my Bash Bunny into arming mode and plug it here into my dev Mac. And as that pops up, let's take a look at the code here. So BGWA put together this optical exfiltration payload that's based on that Hack 5 episode 2320. And you can see here the stages, it does a setup where it opens Vim, it does an attack where it writes the HTML, and then finally it finishes it by saying, hey, you're ready to process those files. It does this by going into attack mode head, and then we go ahead and run Unity and then basically it deletes file, creates the file in Vim. And this is actually really cool. I love this part right down here. Basically this do while IFS equals read data, this whole part right here where you pipe in that source file, that right there 
is gonna go ahead and iterate through every line of that file, writing it into Vim. This is a way cooler way to get your, uh, you know, you know, if you've got a lot of data that you need to get, go ahead and inject into a uh, payload, this is a great way to do it. Hey there, she's got a bow now. Are you just here for the, the licks? I thought you were here for the clicks. She's here for the licks. Probably just the clicks. Thanks, girl. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and make this even better with a a second stage, if you will. So what we're gonna do is instead of typing all of that code into the computer, since it's just a web page in HTML and JavaScript anyway, well, guess what? We're gonna go ahead and attack mode as both HID to inject the keystrokes and Ethernet to run a web server. So let's go ahead and pop over to the Bash Bunny here and under payloads, Let's put it on switch position two. I already have the index.html here, which came from our friend over at uh, uh, GitHub. In fact, you can find uh, BGWA's GitHub over at github.com slash bg-wa exfiltrator, or QR exfiltrator, that's good stuff. And I've already had gone ahead and saved his minified index.html uh, to the directory that I'm gonna put my payload.txt in. Uh, it, basically is then going to allow me to come over here and say if I edit my payload.txt and let's start out like we typically do with an LED setup. I'm saying, okay, let's go uh, magenta. I was gonna say pink like uh, Princess Peach over there, but it's technically magenta. Uh, and then do our attack modes. So we'll do attack mode ECM underscore ethernet. That's just gonna save some time since I know in this case I'm targeting a Mac. And then we're gonna say hid because we're gonna inject keystrokes. Now, since I am targeting a Mac, it's important that I specify a vendor ID and a product ID that is going to be friendly to that device uh, in this case. And to be honest, this is probably the best hidden PID to use across most machines as far as hidden uh, or keystroke injection is concerned. Uh, but it's the vendor ID 0x 05AC and the product ID or PID 0x021E and that is for the Apple keyboards. Next thing we need to do is get the target's IP address which would be the IP address that the computer gets from the Bash Bunny. We'll also go ahead and get the switch position and at this point, we're gonna sleep for five seconds. This is a part that we need to clean up later. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm throwing in this delay because the machine needs to get an IP address from DHCP. There's a better way to do this. I'm just not doing that right now. After that, we're gonna go ahead and from the perspective of our Bash Bunny, we're gonna CD over to the directory where that index.html resides, which in our case is slash root, slash udisk, slash payloads, slash dollar sign switch underscore position, which we got from that get statement there. Uh, and that's because on mine, it happens to be payload switch two, but on yours, it could be payload switch one. So that solves that problem. Okay, and then now that we've CD'd there, we're gonna do Python tack M simple HTTP server we're gonna specify the port of 80, which is standard web server port, and then we're gonna end it with an ampersand so that it's running in the background. You could also do this with PHP dash capital S, 0.0.0.0, and then you could specify the directory. Um, I just happen to like the Python one. I'm probably gonna look at ways to speed this up though because this Python server takes a little bit to get running. I'm putting in a sleep 15 right here. It's not great. We're gonna fix this up, but again, it's proof of concept, so I can't wait to see your feedback on this. So that's the first stage of the attack, is to get the server running, that is gonna, the web server running that's gonna host that index.html file. The next stage of our payload is to actually convince the machine to browse to it, and here's a fun one. We are just going to use run, and this is where you could easily adapt this to Windows or Mac or Linux. Uh, so what we'll do is, you know, specify a new LED because we just went into the attack stage. So LED attack, and we'll do run the operating system. So it could be Win, it could be Unity, it could be, or Window Manager for Linux, or it could be OS X in my case. 
and then we just specify what we want to go into the run dialog. So on Windows, it's in the bottom left, uh, it's next to the little flag. If there's a little flag, you know your machine's been owned. And if you're on a Mac, it's GUI space, and then you get Spotlight, and you can just type in the URL. So in this case, the URL is going to be http colon slash slash 172.16.64.1 slash index.html and then what we have to do here is we can actually pass it base64 and have it encode that without us having to then click browse to a file and choose a file and have it generate the QR codes in JavaScript and play them back to you. You can specify that uh, by doing question mark base64 equals. Now here's the thing. Again, we're still kind of in a proof of concept phase. Uh, there should probably be another stage of this payload that base64 encodes the target files that we actually want, and then we pass that as an argument to this. But for the time being, just to make this short, and because I haven't figured out that part yet, uh, let's go ahead and just pass it some base64, I don't know, like EEF5204D6A. Never heard of it. So there we go, and at this point we can LED finish. And go ahead and save that guy. And now here we are living the dongle life. Living dongle life. Now you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice the first stage of this attack uh, takes a little while because it's setting up all of those services, but thankfully once it hits spotlight, we should know that our Python web server is running in the background. I'm also running in the background. And there we go. You can go ahead and scan that now. So that's pretty much it. I think this is a really cool extension to this proof of concept. I want to see your feedback and how we can continue to make this better together. Mad props to BG Tech WA. You can find his uh, links to his payload down below. And if you are BG WA, can you hit me up at hack5.org slash payload and let me know it's you and we'll verify because I want to hit you up with an awesome Hack5 uh, gift certificate. And if you'd like to have one of your payloads featured, you can go to that same URL and I would love to show your work. So with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. Domain.com has all your website needs from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.